Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, we will be creating some beautiful home decor mood items from the Dollar Tree. Now these projects feature wood decor as well as glass and is created with a fresh look for your space. Now these are perfect for different types of home decor by simply changing up the paint, the stain, or even the decorative accents. Now as always, all of the projects I create have a complete supply list in the description box so you can easily use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now before we start, I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers and if you are a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy these crafts and all of the tips that I will share along the way. So now let's jump right into these wonderful projects. Now this project is a set of decorative candle stands. Now we're going to need five of these glass candle holders and these are from the Dollar Tree. We're also going to need two of these candle plates or a couple of these glass round cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take all of our glass candle holders, remove any of those tags, and we want to make sure that these are absolutely clean. Now to bond these together permanently, you definitely want to use E6000 or Gorilla Glue, something similar that has a permanent bond. For this project today, I am going to be using my hot glue because I do want to repurpose these again in the future, but this will work great as a temporary bond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a round of that hot glue right on top of one of the candle holders and sit another one on top to make a two tier piece. Now for our second piece, we are going to bond this the same way, adding our hot glue to the smaller opened end and placing the other smaller open end to it and then making sure that that's bonded as well. Now this piece will be a three tier, so we're going to put the wider end openings on top of each other to add that third tier. Again, adding that glue around that edge, and you do want to be generous with this, just go ahead and add that around and place that right on top. You want to squeeze that down, wipe away any excess, and now we have a three tier stand. So we're going to set these to the side and grab our plate. So this candle plate here, I had planned to originally use these, but I only had one in my stash. I thought I had two. So what I decided to do is use these glass cutting boards. These I had two in my stash, so these will work perfect. You can probably also use the clear glass uh, so small plates from the Dollar Tree as well. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove all of the covering on those and also remove those little rubber feet on the bottom of each one of those cutting board uh, glass pieces. Now once you do that, make sure you follow up with a little rubbing alcohol and remove all of the sticky residue from the feet that were on the bottom. So now we can bond those glass rounds to the candle holders and you want to bond the smooth side to the top of the candle holders with the rough side on top on top of the candle. So you definitely want to use E6000 if you want a permanent bond but again I am using my high temperature hot glue to bond these all together for my project today. So I'm just going to bond that right in the center of that glass round and now I have one of my candle stands all completely assembled. Symbol. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our longer one and we're just going to repeat the same thing until both of our stands are glued together and here is what both of them will look like when they're all bonded. So now I'm going to take it out and give it a couple of coats of some of this flat black, uh, flat white spray paint by Krylon. All right, so here is the tray with the paint all nice and dry. So I'm just grabbing one of the candle tray stands. And what I decided to do at the last minute was to add some of this metal ribbon. Now I've had this on hand for a little while and I've been wanting to use it in a project. So I didn't think of this until after these dried. So I was like, this would look great trimmed out on these candle stands. Now, if you decide to add this to your project, you definitely want to do this before you paint, but there is a way that I'm going to add it on to make sure it gets a good bond. So what I'm going to do is take a little piece of sandpaper and I'm going around that painted edge of the plate top portion just to make sure that it's a nice raw glass edge and then cleaning it off with a moist cloth just to make sure that it's a nice 
glass a raw edge to bond our metal ribbon to. So I'm taking that flat edge of the ribbon and I'm placing that down. Then you notice my, my stand is upside down so I'm placing the flat side down against the mat and then I'm measuring around cutting it about maybe a half an inch longer than what I need to trim it out. So once that piece is nice and cut, we are going to bond it. Again, you could use your E6000 if you want this to be permanent, um, but I am gonna demonstrate with my high temperature hot glue. So I, what I like to do is I like to start in the middle of the band and I'm just gonna add about maybe a two or three inch strip of that glue and I'm just going to bond I'm going to bond it right in the center. Go ahead and press and hold until that glue bonds to the glass. Now once that does bond, we can start to bond the um, two tail ends of that. Now I'm just going to add a bead of your adhesive. You just want to add a bead of it all the way down the length of the ribbon. And then once that bead is on there, you want to stretch it tight and wrap it around the edge, just making sure it's nice and flush with that top edge. Now you definitely want to work sure, make sure you're working on a flat surface, so make sure everything is nice and bonded evenly. And you're just going to repeat this on the other side, and it'll overlap just slightly, and you, you make sure you don't have any gaps. So once that sits to dry for a few minutes, this is what your metal edging trim would look like. I think it looks really pretty. So now I'm gonna go out and grab my other stand that's nice and dry. And what I'm gonna do is flip that upside down and use the remaining ribbon. And I'm gonna trim this one out the same exact way. So here's that ribbon all nice and bonded and I'm just removing any excess glue that may have oozed out of the seam. Now to make sure that that ribbon does not come off, I'm going along that bottom of the, of the stand along the edge where that metal ribbon is and just adding a thin bead of hot glue. This just makes sure it stays in place and won't, co won't come off your candle stand while it's being displayed. And now here are both of our nice, beautiful stands with that metal trim on there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and give it a couple more coats of the spray paint of choice to make sure everything is nice and blended together. So now that that edging has been nice and spray painted to blend in, here is what the two trays will look like. I think they look absolutely beautiful and all you have to do now is decorate. So there's a couple options you can use to decorate. Now I'm gonna use a couple of these wreaths that I had left over from Christmas. These are little mini wreaths that I got on clearance and they look like they are they could be used in the spring. But you can also make a wreath. I'm using the eight inch wreath form from the Dollar Tree and I use some Walmart eucalyptus branches to decorate it. And if you wanna see a tutorial, I will link it in the up right hand corner of this video and also in the description box below. And then all you have to do is add a couple of LED candles of your choice, and these are available at the Dollar Tree. And here are my two candle holders on a display, and I think that they turned out so gorgeous. Now I wanted a crisp and clean white finish to these for my space, and these did not disappoint in the final result. And I think this metal ribbon trim was the perfect accent to the edge and it really does give these a higher end look. And then you just top these with some mini wreaths and candles to finish them and you have a beautiful decor setting. How amazing do these look? Now if you decide to use the wreath DIY option, here these are on display. Now I really do love the vibrant color of the Walmart eucalyptus greenery and it looks amazing with these. And this time I paired them with some larger LED candles that were from Walmart as well. Now you all have to let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. Now this project is a wood plank style wall sconce. We're gonna need one or two of these Easter signs from the Dollar Tree a pack of these quart craft sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents, and one small mason style jar from the Dollar Tree. 
Now we're gonna grab our sign. Now I do love this carrot sign and I don't wanna ruin it. So I wanna be able to use this as a reversible piece. So what I'm gonna be doing is using the back of the sign for the project. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my craft sticks and what we wanna do is place some vertical planks on the back with these craft sticks. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting down the craft sticks. I'm gonna cut down one edge flat and then we are gonna overlap the edge, the bottom edge, with the rounded end and then we're gonna have the flat edge on top. So I'm adding some of my wood hot glue on there and I'm gonna first start by lining it up with the side edge of the little board display as shown here. And then I'm gonna take another craft stick and I'm just gonna cut another piece again, making sure the edges are overlapped on the top and bottom, add more of that wood hot glue and then adding that other piece on top. Now, no worries about the seams. This is going to have a plank style design. So you wanna cut these pieces in various lengths. You don't want the seams to match up because you really do want it to look like a natural tiled look. So I'm just gonna continue to cutting pieces at various lengths and then adding them, making sure that they have a seam in the center or somewhere along the way where it doesn't line up. And we're gonna continue this pattern all along the board. Now here's the process so far, I'm about three quarters of the way down and you can see how it's all coming together and now the entire back of the board is covered. Now you flip it over, you can see all the edges overlapped and now all we have to do is some trimming. So you do want to make sure you grab a cutting mat to do this and um, so you'll have a nice protective surface. So I like to use a utility blade to use this. You could get one of these from the Dollar Tree. You could use a box cutter or even an X-Acto knife. All you have to do is run your blade carefully along the edge of your sign and these little uh, craft sticks will just break right off nice and clean as you can see here and you're just going to continue this all the way around your sign. Now, as you work around the curves, you just wanna be careful, just running your blade carefully around the edges. Now, you do wanna make sure you start with a nice, fresh blade. I do recommend you do that, so it'll be easy to cut around all of your edges, and here's everything all nice and cut and trimmed. So the last thing, all we have to do is cut the inside hole at the top, and again, use the same utility blade. You just wanna carefully work your way around the circle. Just take your time, and that should come out really easily as well. And now that hole is nice and trimmed out and your board has a beautiful wood plank design. So now what I wanted to do is to actually stain this wood and I'm using my Jacobian Stain by Minwax. Now I'm gonna be applying this to only the back. You do wanna be careful. I do wanna maintain this sign as being reversible. So you don't wanna get any stain on the other side. So I'm just being careful how I apply the stain all the way around. And here it is all stained. And I left a little bit to hold there. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just touching up the edges as well, just making sure that stain does not go to the other side. So here is the board all nice and, sty uh, nice and stained. So I'm just gonna, um, just turn it around and give it a nice wipe with a paper towel to remove the excess double checking that backside and it still looks great and then I'm gonna let this sit out to completely dry So while that dries, I'm gonna grab that little mason jar from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the ring and the insert, and I'm gonna take it out and give it a couple of coats of white spray paint. I used actually some a glossy for this, And here is that jar all nice and finished in that nice satin type glossy finish and I absolutely love it. Now our board is actually dry as well so we can start putting that everything together. So I'm going to grab that ring and also a piece of jute twine from the Dollar Tree. Now I just cut this piece long enough so it'll um, hold my little jar from the sign. So what I did is I wrapped it around the sign and I just wanna make sure the tails of the jute twine end up about in the center of the board as shown here and that was about the length that I needed. So now I'm just going to feed the two ends of the jute twine through the ring of the jar and then I'm going to place the jar right on the front of that sign. Now to get everything to hold into place I'm just going to place 
one piece of the jute twine on each side of the jars and I'm just holding them in place with my fingers as shown here. And then I'm just gonna slide that ring right over the um, threads of the jar and over the string and screw those on tightly and this secures the jar in place. Now I love that you don't have to put any hooks or rings or drill into the board, but this will actually hold it and secure it. So now all you have to do is add your greenery of choice and here I'm just using some boxwood for 97 cents from Walmart and I'm placing it in the little jar and it's perfect. Now if you don't want the ring to show, you can easily cover it up with a piece of ribbon and I'm using some of this ticking stripe ribbon in black and white that I got from Amazon and I will link that in the description box below. And I'm just going to cut a piece long enough to cover around the ring of the jar. Now what I'm going to do when I secure this on, I am going to glue one end of the ribbon onto itself, not actually onto the jar because I want to be able to remove and change this out if I want to. So when you glue the tails together, you could just rotate that seam to the back side of the jar where you don't see it. And now you have a beautiful hanging sconce arrangement with a nice cute trim on the top that you can remove and reverse. And there you have it, a beautiful trimmed board that you can use to hang your jars decor. Now this simple but sweet design is so useful and you could add greenery, some lights, or even flowers to the little jar. And now the wood trim is the star of the show and it totally transformed this Dollar Tree item. Now this is totally reversible, so now you don't have to put it away after the Easter holiday. I hope you give this easy project a try. Now this project is a two-tier wood tray. We're gonna need two of the wood round trays from the Dollar Tree, and I got these from the Dollar Tree Plus section, and these were only $3 a piece. They're also gonna need one plunger from the Dollar Tree as well. Now I'm gonna start off with the Dollar Tree plunger. Go ahead and remove the rubber part, and we're gonna cut this down to be the stem holding the two pieces together. So what I decided on was about seven inches. So I'm marking a seven inch cut from that stick, and I'm gonna take it out to my saw and cut that piece out. So here is my nice seven inch piece ready to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my two trays and everything so I can stain these. Now again, I'm gonna be using my Jacobian Stain by Mimwax. Now I'm gonna start with the little stem holder and I'm just gonna apply the stain and then follow up with a paper towel just to remove all of that excess stain. And here is that piece all nice and stained and I'm just loving this color. So then I'm gonna start staining my trays. I like to start on the inside, wipe it, wipe it um, down as I go just to remove all of that excess. Now here's the entire inside of the tray, all nice and stained, and you're gonna repeat this process on the entire outside piece as well. So here's my tray, all nice and stained, I'm wiping it down, and now you have to just stain your second tray. And now both of your trays are nice and stained and ready to go for your project. Now, as we know, the Dollar Tree isn't perfect with gluing things together. So when you see the edges, you could see where the stain does not penetrate the glue edge around the inside. So what we're gonna do to resolve that is I am going to take two acrylic paints, one in a nutmeg brown and one in a black. And what I wanna do is just use these two acrylic paints to kind of blend them together to make a color to match my stain that I used on my project. So I'm just gonna blend these together until I get a color close enough and taking a fine tipped paintbrush, I am just going to paint over all of the areas where the stain did not penetrate around the edge. And as you can see, this blends in that edge really well and just really it gives it a nice, clean, professional finish. Now I'm gonna do this for both of those trays and now you can see the inside edge looks so much better when you blend those colors in and now you just wanna allow these to sit to completely dry. So now that all of my pieces are nice and dry, we can start building our tray. So I'm taking a scrap piece of this craft paper and to make 
the marking for the center I'm just um, hand marking around the outside edge of that tray to get that circle bottom edge this is the easiest way I've found to find the center than a ruler because rulers can vary so much so I'm cutting out that circle shape that I've um, pressed down to make sure I get the exact circle of the bottom. And then I'm gonna fold that circle into quarters once it's cut out. Now for the center point of that circle, I'm just gonna clip that off with a pair of scissors. And now when you lay your circle back on the center of the bottom of the tray, that hole will mark the very center. So I'm just gonna take my little white acrylic pen and I'm just going to make a dot right in the center so now I know the exact center of the tray. Now I'm just going to repeat this by flipping the second tray over. I'm going to put my template on there and I'm going to mark the center of that as well. So now that those are marked, we are going to take our center support and we are going to be drilling in with a 7 64th inch drill bit in the center. So before we do that, we're going to go ahead and drill the centers of each one of our trays, set those to the side. And before we drill that one, we want to mark that with our pen as well. So I'm just putting a dot in the very center of our support piece, just as a guide. So we know where to drill. Now I'm going to drill right down the center. You want to make sure you go straight down the center when you drill down in there, because this will affect how your tray will finish. If it's not drilled straight, you want it to be absolutely straight. Trust me. So now we're going to need our, our uh, hardware for this and for this I am going to be selecting a 2 inch number 8 wood screw for this project. So now it's time to put everything together. So I'm gonna start with the bottom part of the tray. So I'm gonna be inserting the screw through the bottom of the tray. I'm gonna hand screw it in and try to get it to go in about a quarter to a half of an inch first. Now once that tip of that screw is poking out through the inside, I'm going to take my support and I'm gonna line up the pilot hole with the end of that screw and I'm just gonna kind of twist it over the screw just to get that going inside of the support. And then I'm going to use my drill to drill that screw all the way down until it's flush to the bottom of the tray as shown here. So now you have your center support all nice and secure on the bottom of the tray. So now I'm going to take the top part of the tray, this time taking the screw and going from the inside of the tray. And then again, I'm going to screw it in until it's about a quarter to a half inch outside of the other end. And then adding that into the pilot hole of the other piece and getting that screw going inside of there. Now, once you got it going, now you can take your drill and secure it all the way down until it's nice and flush on the inside. So here is our two tier tray piece all put together. And now the fun part is decorating. And here's that beautiful wood two tier tray all decked out in greenery and decor. Now I place some of my favorite farmhouse trinkets in the top tier and then embellish the bottom in some eucalyptus branches. Now these wood trays are really great and I really love using them in this project. Now if you want to make a tower block version, I'll link the tutorial in the upper right hand corner of this video and also in the description box below. Now we didn't add glue to this tray for a reason and that is to make sure that it could be multi-purpose. It's really easy to reverse those screws out and use these trays individually. Now I really do love this idea too. Now you guys, I really had fun creating these fun and easy projects today and I hope that they have inspired you. Now as always, I do love them all, but let me know in the comments which one of these DIYs today was your favorite.
Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. If you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. It's absolutely free. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.